just stay on this slide before going to the slideshow that I want to show mm -hmm. here. Current LinkedIn page, the Google Scholar, what he's up to these days, and yes, he does work. Uh, so, I can see the LinkedIn page. Oh. Kalpa is currently a staff researcher at Samsung University of Minnesota and uh, in the Bay Area. And uh, he got his bachelor at Sri Lanka University of Colombo, and then he did his PhD with Dr. Shetra and um, Dr. Prasad. And his dissertation uh, was on semantics based summarization of entities and knowledge graphs. His current Google Scholar page has around 416 citations and I think the most cited paper was his work during his PhD, um, which was a triple I, triple AI uh, faces paper in 2015. And there are some papers which were part of his dissertation. And more about him. So he has done some good amount of work and he has published in top places uh, during his PhD. Um, quickly go over his most cited work and some of his patterns. Uh, so, like I said, Faces was his most cited work, uh, which is one of the chapters in his dissertation. It right now has 77 citations. It's a first author's paper. Uh, <laughs> and also has one pattern or adaptive learning of actionable statements in natural language conversation. Then Kalpa has also done some good amount of work with Manas, it looks like, because they have recently filed, that's not accepted yet, but they have recently filed another patent. So I believe this work is somewhat related to Manas's ICIC paper, which is speaking yeah, generation using dynamic data information retrieval in knowledge graphs. And um, Kalpa has also has also won I triple like the I I C from I C article with Dr. Shet and Shreya and Shen Manas, which is knowledge use learning neurosymbolic AI. Uh, coming to the thesis, I just go back to slideshow. Sure. Thesis was on uh, summarizing the entities in knowledge graphs, and the main motivation is. He talks about in the abstract that knowledge graph has billions of entities, I think, and then those are just some, uh, there are some facts related to the entities and the relationship between the entities is even more. And using such large amount of information can be challenging. So his problem statement is on summarizing the entities. Um, to capture the knowledge from the knowledge graph. And the main contribution is twofold. One is single entity summarization and multi-entity sum summarization. So what it means is, and yeah, based on these two uh, uh, problems, he has two papers. So the first one is single entity summarization. What it means is uh, for a given entity, can we have several features merged together. Um, so let's say there is one example he has uh, in his paper. It talks about Marie Curie and then her birthplace, her death place, her spouse, her uh, work institution, her field in which she worked in. Um, so basically these are all features, but then can we group these features as some kind of facets? So it talks about faceted uh, summary, entity summarization. And so summary one, if we look in this figure, it is normal summary and summary two is a faceted summary of entities. So normal summary, it just focuses on some common and uh, related features like birthplace, death place. But then faceted is more like a subset of 
different kinds of features. So there is F1, F2, and F6 as the features from uh, the column features. And it includes F1 is spouse, then F2 is the birthplace, and F6 is known for. So it collectively talks about the place, the relationship, as in uh, the spouse uh, feature, and even the university or where she worked or what she worked for. So that is what is the proposed approach in the FACES paper. It basically just talks about faceted entity summarization. It's a single entity summarization. So it's a very high level. Uh, when you talk about explanation, it's one thing to create explanation uh, just from the text. Uh, and another thing to do explanation when you have the ability to incorporate, you know, talk about all of the various facets or you know properties or dimensions that you have uh, for that entity. Um, and uh, if you're looking at classifying depression uh, or, or classifying a mental health uh, condition, uh, there are specific things that are known, and you focus on them as opposed to you know. All you have is a unstructured text from which you learn something. So, in a, using a language model, you'll get something, um, uh, but you're not going to get those particular spaces. You would not know easily how to focus on them. How, how would a language model come with the fact that for uh, modeling and entity of Marie Curie, these are all the possible things that you would do uh, automatically? How would it come out? But these are all uh, very valuable. Uh, you can decide which of them are relevant for what kind of expression. Or some family aspects of uh, you know, my query versus some uh, professional aspects of my query. You know, having that um, schema for the knowledge. And then, of course, the particular specific instances becomes very valuable, uh, both for summarization, but also for explanation. So, why is this paper called diversity aware, not complex aware? I'm sorry? Why this paper is called diversity aware? So, diversity is in the diversity of the features. Oh. Like, it's not just one, like those facets you see. So, you know, what is the input and output of here? For this particular system, input is just a single entity. entity. And, and the supportive uh, in method support. So, the support is the knowledge graph. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, is, yeah, so what is the output? So output same question. is the summary, the summary of the entity. The, 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 this table is, the, the, I mean, summary. In, to, so summary is summary. summary. Okay, to me, summary is a, is a text, you know, it summarizes something. Yeah. Uh, but the summary and definition here is? Features. Yeah, so, um, basically, it's a, 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 a subgroup. Subgroup, uh, identifying subgroup is, is called summary here. Okay, I see. Not, not no, no, he, his work also talks about summarization the same way Perkiro talks about it. Okay, okay. That will, I hope it comes, but the, okay. this paper is not focused on that. Okay, okay. It is an enabler of that. Okay. So what this is the summary about like F2, F3, F4? Those are the features, features. you see in the features. So subgroup, identification of subgroup. This is the structured, uh, 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 you know, part of the summary. This is on which you can then create narrated narration or description. So Next. all this F1 to F7 belongs to this uh, one particular entity. entity. And how uh, we can say that summary one is better than summary two or summary two is better? No, no, it's not one. They are not separate summaries. They are, you know, they can be used for constructing summaries. So it means how does it differentiate? Because one summary could be just F1 to F7 also, right? How is yeah. it? What's the... So the other question lies, you know, people, how is it being evaluated? Facets are giving more information than the No, no, how is it being evaluated? So yeah. Basic they, question. I think they have used um, semantic similarity for... Um, what is the gold standard? They have used some baseline, but I'm not sure of what... The, like, I have to know the details of the theory. But they definitely have used baseline for this. No, baseline is, is a system. You gold standard. standard. Did you? Yeah. What is gold standard? I mean, Did you read. If I if I say no, F three, not F two, F three, F four. F two, F three is my goal. So how many time system is correct and how many time system is wrong? I want to evaluate, right? So how can I evaluate that? Because here F one to F seven, all all the features are important. Or if we talk about single entity, because that belongs to single entity. Right. 
like why only f2 f3 and f4 are important or some features that's are just an example it could be f5 f4 right, right. F5. yeah whatever the the outcome is like for example let's say f1 f6 f7 f1 whatever it is so, so my understanding from this uh, depiction of the figure is normal summary it just picks one facet and all the features are in that category but then faceted summary picks features from different facets in different groups and that is how it adds diversity to the feature set so that is where you the diversity comes in uh, have we spoken of how they have evaluated that normal summary they have they have they my, my, my take on this what's it called oh. is it? people call it ill defined so if I go to my social network, I have a lot of things. Okay, there's a polar difference. Now I have a gold standard. Some people sit in and say, okay, this is one community, this is one community, this is one community. Mm -hmm. Now I create a system which tells me the community boundaries. Now I have, I have to check against this, you know, human, you know, mark. So I I need some some standard uh, to sit on. Then I can evaluate this, right? Because the system might do something change. else. Isn't the general point here? I probably sat in on this defense, yeah. I just don't remember it. But isn't the general point here that but, not all but, features are created equal and there has to be a way of dynamically selecting <laughs> among those features to answer? Or to respond to someone's particular interest. I'm not particularly interested at all in the birthplace and death place. I care a whole lot about Paris Tech and radioactivity and chemistry. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a way of sorting through the features dynamically, I think, so, to identify which ones are important. That, uh, Conceptual clustering. We rank the uh, facts and facets using ranking techniques to pick the highest ranked facts. I think that is where uh, what you just said. Yeah. The problem statement is clear, but uh, oh, this is just experiment uh, setup and the uh, you know mechanism of evaluating it uh, is not clear. Mm -hmm. Did you listen to the whole dissertation video? That was long back, so I was scheduled quite in the early days, and today I just came through the dissertation. I have no memory of. The okay. I I was quite. I mean. A month back, but then it. <laughs> yeah. So his dissertation is online. I mean, oh. this oh. defense is online. I mean, I mean we also <laughs> gave some tutorial dub 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 or something. That video is also available. I have seen some of it, mm. but not completely. I think from what at least I can see here. So couple of you go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So what he mentions is that summary one uh, contains uh, multiple features from the same facet. Right. That is right. Yeah. So you can but cross. The one is cross. So summary one, we yes. can think of it as baseline, and summary two is what uh, his system is outputting, where uh, we have uh, features from each of the facets. Something, something along that. Line. Also, uh, regarding the evaluation from your previous slide, if I understand correctly, we use the information retrieval techniques. To rank. see to rank which which of the facts and facets are um, hi highly ranked and used probably those or you know which are more <laughs> to the... so this is one line written in the approach section I'm just gonna read it as it is the faces approach generates uh, faceted uh, entity summaries that are both concise and comprehensive conciseness is about selecting a small number of facts. Comprehensiveness is about selecting facts to represent to represent all aspects of an entity that improves coverage. All entity, all aspects. Yes, all aspects. Okay. But then, doctor, that's coming back to your evaluation. <laughs> so no, see, question. see, problem statement is crystal clear. Very good. problem statement is clear. Uh, technique. I mean, I can you know. This, I mean, Kalpa probably did some information retrieval technique. This and that. Today, somebody will try neural network technique. I mean, that's a technique. Then, at the end of the study, I have to evaluate that. How yeah, cool it's, it's, it's there. It's so, that, that part I'm not able yeah. to connect. I just did not put it on the slide. It's there. It's not that. 
Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just asking. About how I, I would guess it's all about hits and, and misses, right? So did you did you include all of the facts that you should have? And um, not not did the ones that you include serve a purpose? And did you include everything that you should have? I would think it would be something like that. No? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I do. But this is still a generic tell me about. Marie Curie, right? Mm -hmm. It's still, it's not, it's not tell Valerie about Marie, Marie Curie, or a, you know, a scientist about Marie Curie. Because yeah. I don't give a damn about where she was born. <laughs> people, um, uh, well, they might, but yeah, <laughs> uh, let's say the Poland people who say no, Marie Curie is from our country. Yeah, but I guess there's a point to be made here about breadth. Right. So if you sample from each of the facets, then you're sort of covering all of her yeah. all of her dimensions. Which is what makes me think it's a generic approach more rather than yeah. a specialized approach. But, it's but things will change. Right? This is the person name. If, if there's a location. OK, or let's, let's say that something else. Things uh, things will change. Right. Things will not remain the same. Yeah. And I think I mean, this is just a small snapshot of this particular entity, I believe Marie Curie, this particular entity has seven other features which mm -hmm. are not included in this table oh. for mm -hmm. demonstration purposes. Yeah, yeah, this is just, just yeah. an example. So, so. scientist, what her profession was, or yeah. all other things. Well, let's say it's an event. Let's say it's an event, 9-11. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then it has to change. Yeah. Dramatically different. Right. So is the, is the notion of a facet a computational notion, or is it just a notion that's imposed on top of the graphical structure for a particular kind of instance or, you know, category thing, I mean, like we, a we person are, or a... We are, we are making it for computational purposes. Well, so is facet co computed, or is it just represented in the, in the graph and then relied upon to construct summaries? It's computed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the valuation is based on the uh, already published data set by Lind Open Data. Mm. This talks about a similar thing. Oh, so then they have, there, there is a gold standard. Yes, there is. That's my question. Yes. Yeah, I just missed it. Just quickly go back. So there are uh, um, main contributions, um, right? B of A. One is B of A. Oh, we have it, right? Yes. Okay. For <laughs> one single and multi entity. So this was. So guys, we have a uh, all at two thirty. Unfortunately, yeah, we got it. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Money. It's about money. <laughs> <laughs> So multi-entity summarization is just about uh, inter and intra entities. Uh, it's the same approach, but it's extended to multiple entities. So if we quickly look at uh, point B, it talks about uh, seeing how the two or multiple entities, that is inter entities, they are similar. And within the entities, that is intra entity, how they are important and diverse. The diversity concept again comes from the notion of from the previous um, mm -hmm. single entity summarization. And this paper again was published at a good place. Uh, Ishkar. Yeah, and this is another example. So here are multiple entities, Apple Computer and Steve Jobs, and how these two entities, although we understand they are relevant, but how the model is going to make any sense out of these semantically related entities. And then uh, the paper talks about summarizing multiple entities using some kind of metric between the entities and within the entities. Uh, and then there are some, some uh, key contributions from the entire dissertation. So it talks about uh, those two, by the way, uh, faces and the second one, REMA, those are two algorithms he has proposed in his uh, dissertation, uh, which talks basically talks about selecting features and summarizing them for generating entity summaries. And then he even talks about uh, like NLP, some, some, some ways to enhance the types, like entity typing using NLP techniques and knowledge graphs, so and teaching them. There is one entirely, uh, one single chapter dedicated to that. Uh, and 
in, in point six, I think, talks about measuring the relatedness between two features by what I just said earlier using the semantic similarity. Some takeaways is uh, this is mm -hmm. quite analogous to document summarization and ranking. It's just that in documents, we have lengthy uh, text. In summaries, we just have some uh, keywords or uh, some phrases which are basically entities. Uh, so, and yeah, it's still relevant even this this dissertation was from 2017. Now it's been five years, uh, but it's still there is research going on in this direction. Uh, there was a big difference between the time where Kalpa did not know how to write uh, uh, papers and then he learned how to write papers and he had all the successes to get it published at AAA and yeah. top places. He has done a wonderful job. I mean, job. Right, but what I'm saying is that some of you have, are struggling in getting your papers published and have a lot to learn about uh, writing. I know. We have to go. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rupa. <laughs> Thank you.